happy, happy Sabbath, and welcome to CJC Online Church. We are so very happy to have you worshiping with us today, and we'd love for you to let us know where you are watching or listening to us from. A special welcome to those of you who are watching or listening on watchcjclive.com or YouTube channel or Facebook page, as well as platforms of various churches across the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. If you are new here, we encourage you to share and to subscribe to our channels. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at at CJCSDA, and you will also see those links posted in the chat. The CJC Online Church is all about keeping you connected during changing times. And our theme for today's program is what matters most to Jesus? What do you think matters most to Jesus? The Adventist Community Services Department will be leading out in our program today. And they'll be telling us a little bit more about that. We are gathered here in the midst of the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we also want to welcome him at this time. So we invite you to bow your heads with us wherever you are. We're going to pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the opportunity to be here. We are thankful that we are alive. We are thankful that we are in your courts to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your mercies that were new for us this morning. And we thank you that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And you've also told us that although weeping may endure for a night, joy comes in the morning and we can get that from being in your presence. We thank you, almighty God, for what you have been doing, what you are doing, and what you will continue to do. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came so that we may have life and life more abundantly. We also want to thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides and instructs us in the way to St. go. St. Catherine Adventist Community Service Report. We thank you, O oh God, that you are still in control, you are sovereign, and we also want to just exalt your name and bless your name at this time. We thank you for all those who will be gathered together to worship you today. We also ask that you will order the footsteps of those who are to be here today with us. We thank you for your servants who are in service today. We pray for your covering and your protection as we go throughout today's program. We also ask that you will tune our voices as we prepare to give thanks through singing. We also ask that you will continue to lead out in our service today. And we are excited to see how you will show yourself strong through our program for today. Continue to bless us, we pray as you see fit. And we give you thanks and ask that this prayer will come to you as sweet incense. In Jesus name, amen. I just want to say welcome to a few persons. We have our regulars with us, Brother Errol, happy Sabbath to you. I'm also seeing Sister Maxine, who is on with us from Texas. I'm also seeing Juliette, happy Sabbath to all of you. And I'm seeing O'Neill watching from Canada. Welcome, O'Neill. Happy to have you with us today. Now, we encourage you to share with us what matters most to Jesus in the chat. We want to share it with everyone who is watching today. So we encourage you to participate in our service today. We have our superintendent standing by to lead us into our Sabbath school program. However, before she comes, we will be having our praise and worship. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We are here this morning to lift God's name on high. And as we do that, we will, our first hymn will be hymn 373, Seeking the Lost. Seeking the 
Seeking the lost, yes, kindly entreating wanderers on the mountain astray. Come unto me, his message repeating, words of the Master speaking today. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world, he gave us his son. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Jesus the Son 
through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder or transport when Jesus praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Next hymn is hymn 422, Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song. Accord and thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne. We're marching, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to heaven, Zion, that beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing. Who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're Upward to Zion, that beautiful city of God. The hills, the hills of Zion, yields a thousand sacred seeds. Before we reach the heavenly fields, before we reach the heavenly fields, or walk the golden streets, or walk the golden we're marching, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, that beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound, then let our songs abound, and every tear be dry. We're marching through. To fair worlds on high, to fair worlds on high. We're marching, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, that beautiful city of God. And we're marching. Beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Our next hymn will be hymn. Happy Sabbath. It is indeed a blessing to be sharing with you today. We are celebrating Community Services Weekend, and today we are focusing on the theme, the extension of the theme, Service with Love. And our main theme is What Matters Most to Jesus. I'm your superintendent, and I'll be sharing with you today. The Central Jamaica Conference ACS department serves in more ways than one. We reach out to individuals who suffer 
from natural disasters. We share care packages from time to time. We also give emotional support to varied individuals. We do community development and we also ensure that our youth are empowered. We ensure that we have our back to school program as well. And from time to time, you will see us decked out in our yellow tops in the community right across Central Jamaica Conference, reaching out to individuals. And today, for Sabbath School, we really want to share with you some of the demonstrations of love that we have been imparting right across the conference. At this time, we are going to take our opening hymn followed by the scripture reading and then our prayer, and we will come back after that. Our opening hymn is hymn 316, Live Out Thy Life Within Me. Scripture reading comes to us from Luke 10, verses 30 through to 37, and it reads, Then Jesus said, Then Jesus asked and said, Certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by and on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, he came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, 
as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, poured on oil and wine, and he sent him on his animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarius, gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? And he said, he who showed mercy on him, then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Earrings. Loving Father and our God, this morning we truly thank you that we have this opportunity to tell of your goodness and your love and to demonstrate Jesus to the world. This morning, Father, as servants, we come before you giving you thanks that we can be a part of your work. And as we Go about our daily duties, Lord. We pray that you'll help us to show you and to demonstrate your love. And as we go from day to day, oh God, we pray that you'll control our lips, that we'll speak the words that come straight from you, that we'll give a helping hand to those who are in need, that we'll give words of comfort to those who are troubled. And especially in this time, oh God, when the world is muddled, Father God, we pray that you'll help us to give words of comfort, words of hope, give assurances, oh God, that you are still in control and that you will take care of our daily needs. And so God, we thank you for this opportunity and we pray that you'll continue to bless us, keep us safe, keep us focused on you, that when this life shall be no more, those who we have worked with will be garnered into your kingdom along with us, hearing from your lips, well done, thou good and faithful servant, Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering our prayers. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, we pray. Amen. What matters most to Jesus? It is for his people to follow in his footsteps by being there for others, having love and compassion to those who are our neighbors, as the scripture says. Today, we have some highlights of some of the aspects of what we have been doing in the community from the parish of St. Catherine and Manchester and also Clarendon. We'll be sharing with you some of the activities that we have been involved in in demonstrating love to those around us. For the years 2020 to 2022, here we are again today, touching lives in every way. God loves us, he sent us to let his love shine forth from you. God is love, God is love, God is love, God is love. God is love. Come and join this caring band. Come and lend a helping hand. We are again today touching lives in every way. God loves us, his son does too. So let his love shine forth from you. Over the years, the Adventist Community Services members have gone through every era they can to share and demonstrate Christ's love in a practical way. Love has no boundaries. And so community services assistance knows no boundaries. We have had cases where members from the Brayton Seventh-day Adventist Church traveled to Uatan, taking with them hot water to bathe a shut-in and to provide a hot meal for him. However, through the collaborative effort that exists within the parish of St. Catherine, this case was brought to the attention of the Lindsay Zone and they have been providing the necessary assistance. We have had a case where in the Linstead Zone, a housing unit was constructed for someone who was living in a pig pen. In Old Arbor Zone, 
through Project Wheel, a housing as unit was constructed for a family who previously resided in a chicken coop. We have seen a situation where a partnership was done with overseas sponsors and a family of four was taken from a dilapidated shack and placed into a two bedroom home. And that was completed before the end of 2021. The ACSD members could not have impacted communities without the help and support including financial support of the pastors and members. So thank you pastors, thank you brethren for reaching in your pockets and your cupboards and reaching out to others in dire need. The zone leaders have been instrumental in designing and implementing various projects that impacted communities. Under the Community Transformation Initiative, a number of communities benefited from work being done by churches in the communities. These include, just to mention a few, work done in the Natty Farmyard area. In fact, there's a branch Sabbath school going on in that community right now. Then we have work done in the Brayton community, Ockerby community, Fraser's Content, and McCoy Gardens. Persons who have been assisted with beds, mattresses, and even with assistance for their utility bill have expressed gratitude. And as for the children, they received devices, data, books, and school supplies. Assistance was also provided to fire victims through the networking and synergy that exists in St. Catherine. You see, once an item is available in another zone or another church, there is no hesitation to share. In a few minutes, we will hear from persons as they share what has been happening from their different perspective. I am Sylvia Facey Reed, president of the Fraser's Content Senior Citizens Club. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Yvette Scott and her team from Diamond Acres Seven Day Adventist Church. They have been working with us in the community for quite a while. My name is Gary Stewart. I'm the president of the Fraser's Content Community Development Foundation, the FCCDF. Recently, we have partnered with the Diamond Acres Seventh-day Adventist Church in an effort to bring to our community much needed resources, benefits such as food, clothing and shelter, and in some cases, educational opportunities. We have built bathroom facilities, repair houses, provided mattresses, gas stoves, food packages, hot meal, and support uh, educational project. We ask that you continue to support the wheel program of the Central Jamaica Conference because a significant amount of the funds came from that source. The work is not complete. The work will not and will never be completed until Christ's return. Until then, friends, we encourage you to continue to give whatever assistance you can. You see, as you give to Project Wheel, we will be able to continue funding projects and giving support to initiatives from the department. Thanks to the conference administrators, thanks to Elder Bulgin and the Wheel Board for their continued support. Of course, special thanks to all zone leaders and their respective team members for the teamwork that they are engaged in. Friends, you too can be a part of this group. You too can make a difference. You too can allow the Lord to work through you to touch hearts and transform communities. So come and join this caring band. Come and lend a helping hand. ACS is not you. ACS is me and you. Adventist community services mean ACS.
happy Sabbath again. We have here Sister Donna Good from the Four Parts Seventh-day Adventist Church that is in Clarendon, and she's here to share with us um, how they show love to members of their community and right across Clarendon. Sister Good, what are some of the ways that you demonstrate love to the members of your community? Good morning, everyone. Um, we share love to the members of co our community by mingling with the members of our community, by talking to them, engaging them in constructive conversation. And whenever they have a planned activity, we would take part to show that we really care and we are a part of that community. Let me ask you this question. And is it that you find persons within your community having needs? And what are some of the needs that you find they have? And how do you, as a church, help to um, alleviate some of the challenges that these individuals might have as it relates to their needs? Okay. First of all, in the beginning of the year, sometime in March, we did a community survey where we went to the community of Shekels, Denby Crawl, Four Parts Proper, Clarendon Gardens, Cherry Tree, and we asked them several questions to find out their needs. Well, their greatest need is not really food, as some of us would suppose, but their need was job and prayer and um, Bible studies. So we go around and we prepare um, street meetings, Yes. We visit their homes, and when there's a death in the family, we'd go there to pray with them and support them as much as we can. Okay, so you're saying it's not just the physical needs that are being met. No. But the social and the mental, all the needs are being met as best as is possible. Certainly, certainly. Ma let me ask you, how fulfilling is that for you and the team that you work with? To be honest, when we keep things to ourselves, we are not happy. Happiness is when we can help someone to be happy. Amen. So when we go around and talk to them and help them the best way we can, we have a fulfilling um, desire. We feel good about it. And we, can, uh, we are always encouraged to do more. And I must let you know that this is Jesus' method. And if we are following Jesus, then we have to do what he did. I just want, finally, I want you to share with those out there who might be hesitant in terms of joining with the community services team. Because sometimes we see it as a group that only consists of elderly persons. But what could you say to the young people to get them to come on board and to become a part of this great ministry that the Lord has set up and we should be carrying out? Okay, that's a good question. In our church, we have our children joining with us. Amen. So wherever we are going, children are always there and they are always participating in their little way. They pray, they share they give their little thoughts, and they are completely involved. So we don't leave them out. We are, they are always there. Amen. Thank you and very much. And they are enjoying it. They do enjoy it and always ask, when are we going back? Amen. They do. Thank you very much, Sister Good, for You're sharing. And I just want to encourage all of us who are out there to do something. Share love with somebody. Might not have money and all of those things, but just a smile can do a wonders for a lonely heart that is out there. God bless you. Have a blessed Sabbath. Wonderful. There are times in life when we have hit our lowest point and sometimes we tend to, tw to question God. But there's something else we always keep in our hearts and in our minds. You see, the blood that Jesus shed over 2,000 years ago, that same blood will never, ever lose its power. Mm, you see, the blood that Jesus shed 
for me Way back on Cal Calvary I know the blood That gives me strength Gives me strength from day that verse one more time for somebody who just didn't get it you see the blood that my Jesus shed for me way back on Cal Calvary I know the blood that gives me strength, gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. You can lift your hand and praise the Lord wherever you are. For it reaches to the high. From day to day, singing will never lose its power. This is my grandmother's favorite verse. It soothes my doubts and calms all my fears. And it dries all, dries all my tears. I know the blood that gives me strength from Gives me strength from day to day. Sing it will never lose its power. Just to get it. For it reaches to the highest mountain. That gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. Let's one more time. Oh, sing it will never lose, never lose. 
blessing it has been and God has been good to us we are a body that believes in studying the word and each week we review our lesson and this week we have the children section and then we will have the adult section will be which will be led out by Pastor Cornel Morgan I invite you now to take your quarterlies for those who are at home and watching online and join in the discussion as we go through our lesson review. a summary of lesson six of the primary lesson first place the memory verse says three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed giving thanks to his god daniel 6 verse 10. the message is i worship god when i give him first place in my life what choices do you make this morning daniel knew how to worship god he knew that he wanted to put God first every minute of every day. Every day, three times a day, Daniel opened his window, knelt, and prayed. Daniel always prayed at those times, and often in between. Always Daniel made sure that his time with God was the most important time of the day. When King Darius became ruler of Babylon, he appointed 120 governors. Then he put three presidents over those governors, including Daniel. Before long, King Darius even planned to put Daniel in charge of the other presidents because he did his work so well. It's good. Happy Sabbath again. We are apologizing for the video presentation and we are going to we will come back shortly <laughs> For this week's kindergarten lesson is healed at last. Have you ever been sick for a whole day? Have you ever been sick for two or three days? You probably wanted to get well. The woman in our story today had been sick for a long, long time. She had been sick for 12 years. Yes, boys and girls, 12 long years she had visited doctors after doctors, but no one could help her. Then she heard that Jesus could heal people. She just had to see him. She knew he could make her well. Because of her faith, when she found the opportunity, she reached out and touched the tiniest bit of the back of his robe. Instantly, she knew she had been healed. She believed in Jesus. She worshipped Jesus because 
he cared for her and healed her. We praise Jesus for he is always good to us. Which brings me to the memory verse. It says, give praise to the Lord. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 8. The, and the message is, we praise God for taking good care of us. Always have faith in G Jesus, boys and girls, for he cares for you. Good morning, everyone. I trust and hope that you are doing well. My name is Jaden Russell, and I will be doing the PowerPoint lesson. The topic for this week's lesson is mistaken identity. The PowerPoint is, give us the when we give God the honor, people learn from it. One day, Paul and Barnabas were walking down the road in the town of Lystra, and they were preaching the gospel. And when Paul was preaching the gospel, he saw a man lying down in front of the crowd. He looked at him and realized that he was blind. And he went up to the man and said, Be healed. And the man was healed. So the people thought that Paul and Barnabas were gods that came back to the town of Lystra. So they worshipped and praised them. Paul came out of his house and or the place where he was living and said, No, we are not gods. We are humans just like you. We just believe in the living God. And I think you should too. Thank you for listening. Good day, everyone. My name is Jordan Tucker, and I'll be doing the Cornerstone Lesson, Lesson 7. This lesson is entitled, A Good Report. Our key text comes from Colossians 3, verse 17 in the New King James Version. It reads, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In the lesson, the story is about Paul, who was put under house arrest in Rome for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul didn't make his circumstances torment him. To display this, he expressed joy in his letters to some churches throughout the region. He has identified his joy comes from knowing Christ and being able to spread the word. Furthermore, he thinks it is a privilege to serve God. Even as a prisoner, he asked the, his Christian brothers and sisters to pray that he would have more opportunities to share his faith. This means that Paul didn't care that preaching about God got him in serious trouble and would do it again all in the, in the name of sharing the gospel. He even encourages them to continue their walk with Christ and begs them to not let this sway them. In passages written in Philippians, Paul wants God believers to remember. Brothers and sisters, here is what I want you to know. What has happened to me has actually helped to spread the good news. One thing has become clear. I am being held by chains because I am a witness of Christ. As I conclude, in this story, Paul teaches us that we should always do the work of the Lord despite our many circumstances. Furthermore, even though Paul was under house arrest, he still wanted to go out and preach the gospel. He implored his fellow brothers and sisters to not make the, his circumstances or other circumstances hinder them from spreading the word of God. We all should try to be like Paul. Thank you for joining our children's lesson. Join us again next week on CJC Online Church. Bye.
morning, Church Online. It's a joy to be with you this morning to share in this lesson review on the topic, The Covenant with Abraham. Let us pray. Loving God and our Father, we give you thanks for this morning. You have put us to bed last night and you wake us up this morning that we can be alive and move and to worship you. Bless us today as we worship you, Lord, in this lesson review in Jesus' name. I trust and pray this morning that each of you, wherever you are, will grab or take your quarterly with you as we seek to understand more of God's word for us today. This week is another week of reviewing the covenant with Abraham, the seventh lesson of our quarterly. It is so interesting because it talks about God's covenant with somebody who God loves, somebody who fear God and honor God. And the memory verse says, and you can read with me, it, it take, is it taken from Genesis chapter 2, and ver, Genesis chapter 15 rather, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 15 and verse 2. And it reads, But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me? Sin I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Now, we can see here that uh, the Bible says that Abraham, ha Abraham rather, he had something in mind. But we must understand, first of all, when we talk about covenant, covenant, therefore, is something is uh, a, an agreement between two or more persons. And so, before this chapter came into view, God had called Abraham way back when, from out of his family and nation, way back from the, the land of Or. And so, he called him and God promised to bless him, to multiply him. And he left his home at age 75, his wife was about 65 years old. And God had planned for him. And God never changed from his promises. We can take God at his word. And this chapter and verse, as it mentioned in verse 2, that, that Abraham repeated something to God. But if we could just go back to verse 1, we would understand that the Bible says that God came to Abram to talk with him, to remind him that he is the still God, the still the God who have called him from his born land, and he, he has never changed. But because God promised that he would bless him and multiply him, and so he was saying to God, look, I am getting old, and, and my wife getting old, you see? They were at senior age. And Abraham, he looked for the promised boy, child. He wanted to see something happen, and nothing was happening. And so he took, he, 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 he was saying in his mind that, look, one that born in his house, who he, he was a manager for his good, he thought that this one, but God said, uh-uh, I still keep my promise. I never change. So God said to him, fear not, Abraham. And, 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 and so the Lord brought him out and showed him that look and, and to look and around and to count the stars and, and all of those. When you go further down in the chapter, you will see there where God reassured him that look, he still keeps his promise. Beloved friend, we must understand that everybody at times we go through some situation in our lives, and sometimes doubt may want to come to us. It could be children today. It could be somebody out there who you expect in the job. You've been praying to the Lord a long time, and the job not coming. And so somebody out there, you want to get married, and the, the, the partner, the, the, the person you're looking for, not coming. And then you, it, it, it comes back to your mind. What is saying praying? And the devil whispering, don't pray. But we must understand that God still keep his promise and we must take him at his word. We must trust him in spite of. When we move on to the 
other part of the story, we saw where, where uh, well, it, it further tells us that Abram demonstrated faith in God. He trusted God so much that it's not so much him, but it's God who has made the promise. God is the one who has called him. We must understand, beloved friends, many of you may be at home today, can maybe ill health or whatever the situation. You may be praying for a situation. You are healing for, it could be blood pressure, whatever it is, arthritis or whatever. And whatever it is, right there in your bag, your, 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 your purse and wherever, your bank account may be running, going down and nothing seemed to happening. But God called Abraham. Abraham, he reminded him that, look, he still keeps his promise. You must understand wherever you are, in spite of what COVID may have done for you or some of you, God still loves you. I want to assure you, just like Abraham, who God called, we must remember that we are not different from him. He was a human being like we are, but he exercised faith in God. And God would come to him at different time. We assure him that, look, he is in its corner. And there are times, beloved friends, we may be going through our crucible and, and, and the feeling that come, may come on us. We believe that we are alone and God has forgotten us. Abram felt that way. But guess what? When he thought that it was done, it was over, and that's happened with us all of us sometimes. When we believe that the door is closed and only darkness and gloom around us. And, and sometimes, most of all, is when we have friends uh, around us and we see others climbing the lever of success and people are getting through life. And look, man, people are around Abraham. Uh, get, having, getting children, married people, and all of that going forward. And he may be saying it is my way, but God has promised that he's going to bless me and multiply me. Look, man, and make me a great name. But look, look, but nothing coming. But God assured him, said, look, I still keep my promise. He was getting old. Don't worry, my friend. Wherever you are, whatever the situation, don't worry about that. God loves you, and he still keeps his promise. Just as he started out before and he held on to faith, God wanted him to continue that journey of faith because God had the master plan. He has the plan. He just want him to be faithful. Look, you know, we need to look not just here and what we are seeing and the immediate. We need to look to the eyes of faith. Look on the bigger picture where God is taking us to. Yes, because you see, beloved friends, they, Abram and his wife, Sarah, you see, they, for some reason, they got distracted because sometimes we tend to look on others, what others are achieving or getting, and we are not getting it. And sometimes people in, in this life, and sometimes church members, Many sometimes leave the boundary, leave where God would have us to be. And look, these were church people. Abram, Sarah, a couple who God has called to multiply them, to bless them, that the nation of the nations around them could be blessed. We must trust God in everything. It may be hard. But God is God, and nothing changed God from not being God. And only God can be God. We can't change that. And we can't help God. God is too powerful, too great. He, he, has, he has many things. He knew everything that we don't, we don't know nothing yet. They were getting who? And they said, look, the towel were him. And just, be, just before, in case we die, maybe God is saying this, but it may be ironical. But, but look, let me try something to see if God would be pleased in what we do. So they devised a plan. Sarah devised a plan. They had an Egyptian helper. And, you know, 
They said, look, because we are old now and the towel is towards our hands. So look, Abraham, I want you to get married to my helper. That's what Sarai decided on. They were trying to help God because they couldn't wait any longer because ears were going. They were getting down in age and all of that wrinkles were coming. And, and, and so a marriage was done and Sarai gave uh, Aga, uh, or Elpa to, to Abra, Abram to be wife. And, and when she got pregnant, he went in and she, he impregnated her. And when he, she, she got pregnant, she discovered that, the Elpa now discovered that she was pregnant, she began to give a wrong signal. She no more behaved as if she was an Elpa. She acted as if she was no wife. And now the trouble began in the home. Trouble started. You see, beloved friends, we must remember, I remember the topic we are looking at in this uh, review is God's covenant with a man. We must not forget. We must not forget that we all who have called to the kingdom at such a time as this, we are called in a covenant relationship with Jesus, in spite that the going may get tough or the tough may get going, we must still remain faithful to God. We must take him at his word. You see, beloved friend, trouble started at the home. And Agar, he went from, from that home because the mistress drove her out. Because my grandmother used to use the word, I don't know online if you understand what I'm about to say here. Bull, two bull can hold in one pen. I don't know you online if you understand my language. But the truth is, Sarai is, was still the mistress. And Abraham, uh, the husband, that wasn't, doesn't change. God meant it that way. And God's covenant relationship stayed with them, was with them. And it doesn't matter in life, beloved friend. The truth is, there are times when individuals made, we all sometimes made, made mistakes. And we ran away from where God would lead us, would want us to go. And the truth is, because, you see, God is a God of love. He's a patient. God is patient. God is kind. And it's, it doesn't matter how we treat each other unlovingly and all of that and how we behave. And sometimes we treat God bad. Turn our backs on him at times because of situation. But God is the one who keep running after us. That's the loving God I'm talking about here in this lesson review. He's still running after them because he had the master plan. He had their good in mind. And God at another time appeared to Abraham again. Yes, in all of these, God came back to them again. You see, we must understand here that because God had their good in mind and God still kept his promise, what a loving God we serve, beloved friends. You see, beloved friends, God came back to them in as much as they doubted God in many ways. When God told them that, look, yes, Sarai, you Abram, you shall, you both shall bring forth the, the promised boy. The promised boy, the seed. You see, they couldn't, they could not see it. Sometimes in life we must understand, though, we must understand here that God is a big God. The you see, we must understand that spiritual things are spiritual discernment. And why we get weary and sometimes give up? Because we sometimes forget to keep praying, keep trusting, 
in God. Sometimes we will look on the things that are of lesser importance and forget that which better. The truth is, God had to change their name. God said, your name shall be Abraham, not Abram anymore. And your name shall, her name, his wife, shall be Sarah instead of Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. God gave them a, na a name change. You see, there are times when God has to come and give a new renewal, reassure us, uh, to empower us, make some change. And name in those days signify characters. God had to come for them and he will do for us. Make, he has to, no wonder Paul says, look man, we must present our body a living sacrifice, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, and be not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Beloved friends, all of us have to go through that process of renewal as we go through our Christian experience. And we see the end result. God blessed him. The day and end, God came back again to him when he was now 899. His wife was close by him. And look, Abe, God said, look, man, you shall bring, your wife shall, shall give birth to this born child. The truth is, the Bible says that his wife laughed. They were well in age now. You see, the one that was born in the family, Ishmael, was not of promise. And so, you see, beloved friends, our ways are not God's ways. God's ways are the best ways. He has the handle. We are just the blade. And you see, beloved friends, at 99, God said, at this time coming, following here, you, your wife shall bring forth a child. And you see, when Abraham, Abraham now, at age 100, because that child was born, because his, his, his wife got pregnant, and, 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 and now the, the child was developing, and when Abraham was 100, the child was born. The promise was fulfilled. But there's something we must understand in the lesson before I trust, before I, before I close here, is that the angel that came to, to, to Abraham at his house, at his tent, three men came, three angels came, and they came with a plan. They came with, some, uh, with a message because they had a plan. And Abraham was so kind, he showed hospitality to them. And this tells us in this lesson that we must be people of hospitality. He showed kindness, he, he, he washed their feet, and, and it shows that he accepted them. And, and just when the men, he provided food and all of that, and the men were about to leave, the Lord said to, him, to himself, should I hide from Abraham what I had in mind? Because the angel came to destroy Sodom. And Abraham knew, knew that his, his, his nephew was down Sodom. And God would not have it that way that the people should perish there. But God told Abraham that, look, because the people, the sin of the people, the sins of the people were so rampant, it was getting out of hand. So God decided to put an end to them. We know that this world is coming to its close. And we thank God as the promised son I am, Isaac, he was a type of Christ. And we see in the lesson here where Sodom and Gomorrah here was destroyed as God, as God told Abraham. And, and Abraham Labi spoke to God concerning the people, asked the Lord if he could the, the, to, to, to spear them. But God said to Abraham, look, not even five were they righteous. We know that the world is coming to a close. Jesus is soon to come. And the church today, that's why the church is here, to warn the world of the coming doom. May God bless us today.
wherever you are, as you continue to study the word and to share your experience, share the good news to your neighbors and friends that Jesus is coming again. May God bless you all as we continue to lift up Jesus. Let us pray. Loving God and our Father, we thank you for this morning again. Thank you for this lesson. I pray, Lord, that it will resonate, the message will resonate in our heart, that we may live right, a uh, hopeful life to you, that when you come, you will find us faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We give God thanks today for his word. What matters most to Jesus? The Bible encourages us to be compassionate, to follow the example of Jesus when we minister to others. A life of compassion is a natural outflow of someone who has been saved and is in a saving relationship with God. And so our acts of compassion are simply the evidence that we have tasted and seen that the Lord is God. And we are quick to share that good news with someone else so that they can discover the truth for themselves. As I close, let us ask God to help us truly experience sweet intimacy with him. Then his love would automatically flow out of our hearts to those who are in need. Have a blessed Sabbath. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine. Please lead me and guide me, O oh, Savior divine. Take hold of mine idols and even my foes. Please lead and direct me in the way. I long for the joy just to lean on thy breast, recreate me and make me as one of thy own as I kneel before thee to petition the throne you see I know I am unworthy though saved by thy grace I know that my duty is to daily seek your face so in hope in spirit the phone and I dial the number I dial it direct to thy throne Jesus I long for great peace and sweet rest I long for the joy just to lean on Lord, recreate me and make me as one of thine own. As I kneel before thee to petition the throne in a sweet voice. 
responding, he says, I'm listening. I can hear. No matter your troubles, no matter your trials, just remember this one fact. God loves you and he will always be there. Remember this. He says, I have power to take your whole heart and make it brand new. My love is sufficient for others, so it's sufficient for you. Oh, oh Jesus, I long for great peace and sweet rest. I long for the joy just to leave. As I kneel before thee to petition the throne, as I kneel before thee to petition the Amen. What a beautiful song. Beautiful song. The Bellas Gate Church is celebrating their 100th anniversary. For Church in Action this week, we, we will be highlighting this church. We have pastor's time also coming up. So stay tuned with us as we continue to worship. Welcome to the 100th anniversary celebration of the Bellas Gate Seventh-day Adventist Church under the theme, Moving On in Faith. Stay tuned to Church in Action as we take you on a remarkable journey as we discover more about this Church of God. Today's journey takes us through the town of Old Harbour, over the mountains and into the plains of North St. Catherine to the Bellas Gate community, home of CJC's 100-year-old Seventh-day Adventist Church. Bellas Gate is a deep rural farming community. Uh, farming is the mainstay of the community. Then you have skilled workers or laborers in a very small percentage. But to me, it's a blessed district. The community is a very peaceful community. I mean, you know, no, no crime. You know what I mean? Okay. Because the people are kind of conservative. Children do very well in academics and I don't know if it's because the school and the church are so near, but there's a special blessing. And so the children excel, and especially those children from the school who attend this church, who are members, they do exceptionally well. But the overall, Bellas Gate community, peaceful community, one that the people are friendly, they're welcoming, and whatever you want, they will give you the support. For me as a pastor, I am a community person. I know almost every single home in this community. And persons just embrace me. All you have to do is to just love the people, show them respect, and show them that you're not better than them, and they will accept you wholeheartedly. District of Bellas Gate, Mr. Jonathan Cohen, a deacon in the Ebenezer Baptist Church, has his custom was to read his Bible, came upon the three angels' message, which declared that the creator of the heaven and the earth 
had set aside a special day of rest. His interest was motivated. He started to inquire about worship on Sabbath instead of Sunday and was informed that a group of such worshipers could be found at a district in Clarendon that is known as Bird's Hill. He saddled his donkey and went in search of these believers. He found them and he worshiped with them. A year later, he, along with a group of stalwarts, held an open-air meeting in Bellesgate Square. The gospel was published during this period and 16 persons were baptized. Subsequent baptisms were conducted and the company was organized into a church by Pastor Hurden. And Brother Henry Watts was elected the first elder. This church up on the hill was a choosing of our God. Today, our beacon light is still illuminating the district in which she is situated. Attending this historic ceremony was Jeremiah Thomas, one of the oldest members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Bellas Gate, and he will be celebrating his 100th birthday in July of this year. I feel good eh? that we all keep me so long. I was blessed by my mother who I come up over this church, be the, the first deacon to send here. And I left, go to America and, and come back. And they still give me. So when this church was very creative, then at the end, as deacon, I was here to send me here. But here we, we have hope near me, around the district here, right to Rapuva, right to Chapleton, Canton, Brownsall, all about. So from that, same church rise up and then mm, working right now. When Miss Man, young people enjoy like crusade, and crusade never over till I want to work like a night. Yeah, everybody I come home quite happy and joy and feel good. And I plan to go back tomorrow night again. Tomorrow you meet up the, the same preacher, evangelist, preacher, the pastor up and the road. Whether you are baptized or baptized not, you, you tell him thanks to the sermon and make him know you enjoy it. Then he said to yourself, come back tomorrow night, man. So all when the crusade lasts a four week, you say, Pastor, I don't mind if I one month. Yeah. Today is one of my fondest memories to live to see this church being in the area, occupying this little space for 100 plus years. It's about 100 years and three months now. And that is a, I regard this as a great pleasure that the Lord has spared my life to see this day. The criticism is built up. Execution will come. The challenge is will come. Remain faithful. And that's the message I'm taking to this 100-year-old Bella's Gate Church. Of being of faithful unto the end. Amen. And a crown of life. Amen. You will receive. One of my challenges is to see all the members, especially the officers, cooperate and move in the same direction. But you know, you will have different challenges in different areas. But whatever it is, we are still moving on. During the pandemic, we had a lot of challenges where we didn't have internet services, but now, praise God, we have internet services. So the way how we survive, we use small group ministries. We collected our tithes and offering 
through that medium as well. And to God be the glory, we have seen where the Lord was, he carried his, his, his brethren, his people. And now we can say with assurance that God was leading in all of this. Amen. Boy, 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 again. As new members join the church in Bella's Gate, they are sure to find a caring and supportive church family waiting to serve them when they need it most. Lots of good amount of experience, but one particular was when my dad died. You know, that's when you kind of hit the brink now, forget what I'm saying. So you hit that break right there. The church support was wonderful. Um, I remember back then we had a lot of family members from the church would come to our, visit our home, right? And they did have like Vesper services and such with us. You have a lot of them. I remember I did get some long, I call them some long texts, epistles, that was what we would say, right? And you're reading them and they're just encouraging you, Bible verses, behind Bible verses, encouraging you um, to keep strong in the faith and then now I should say my young people like most of them in the church well are my cousins and such so we are all big families right we are all one big family so they were very supportive very very supportive and they would like check up on us every Saturday they make sure that we are at church they come, they sit beside us, they talk to us, they try to put a smile on our faces, especially my face at all times, and that was really good. So the support from the church overall was really, really, really good. Really excellent, really good. As they recall the challenges of the past, surviving two major hurricanes, they are grateful for the Lord's hand in shaping their story to one of victory and a promising future. To see the church move on spiritually and to see people come into the church, inquire about the message and become a part of the church, it's really a pleasure having that. What I want to see for the church going forward is the rest of my young persons who have turned back and who are now in the church to come back to the fold. And for those of us who are already in the church, to keep more grounded, to be more grounded, to be more steadfast, keep the faith, and to continue to do the work of God so that others out there, and even the ones that were once walking with us, they can actually see God through us and just come back to the fold and know that this is the place to be and there's no other place to be. My hope for Bella's gift. As we enter the new phase and coming out of this pandemic, my wish is that at the end of this series, we will just see others just running to the house of safety. It is my prayer, it is my wish, and it is our hope that as a team, we will continue to carry on the work here in Bellas Gate. Evangelism is at our heart. And we will do that with all our might, with all of everything that is in us. And we will carry the everlasting gospel to this dying world, and in particular, in this part of the vineyard. This service was well attended by leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jamaica, namely the Jamaica Union and the Central Jamaica Conference, members from sister churches and community members. Like a lighthouse on a hilltop, the Bellas Gate Seventh-day Adventist Church has been burning bright with the gospel for 100 years. As they look towards the future, moving on in faith, we hope that they will not be daunted as they continue to touch lives with the saving message of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning into Church in Action. Join us next time as we may be in a community near you.
Well, this segment is called Pastor's Time, but I am not a pastor. However, I work very closely with the Community Services Department here at the Central Jamaica Conference. And this morning, I just want to speak to you a little bit more about community services, as well as to just remind you or maybe inform you of some of our upcoming activities in the conference. I want to start off by saying congratulations to the Windsor Heights Church who celebrates their 12th anniversary today. And next week, the Brayton Church will be celebrating their 40th anniversary. The church is growing, brothers and sisters. The church is moving. Congratulations, Windsor and Brayton. Keep moving forward. Keep up the good work. But Christ's ministry wasn't just based in a temple. As a matter of fact, he was more on the road than in church. He preached, he healed, he mingled with men and had compassion on them. He served. And we are to do likewise. What is your ministry? How are you being the hand and feet of Jesus? The Adventist Community Services, for short, ACS Department, has a place for you. ACS is about service and sacrifice. It's about giving. It's about meeting the felt needs of the people. These needs may be food, clothes, shelter, education, health-related needs, friendship, prayer, empowerment, Bible study, and the list goes on and on. So you see, no matter what talent the Lord has given you, there's a place for you with the ACS department. We have three federations, Manchester, Clarendon, and St. Catherine. And those federations are composed of different zones. And those zones include different districts. And of course, each district has its local churches. So the team is big. Everyone is interconnected. And in that chain, there's a link that represents you. As you may be aware, we started a food pantry at the conference last year, April, and it has been doing so well. The needs that we have been seeing have just been so great. Persons come from all over, even outside of Central Jamaica Conference, needing assistance, all type of assistance. And even though the pantry was uh, put in place to serve food, there are other things that we have ha had to do. And the problem is, we are trying our best to feed everyone that comes. But when you have so many persons on a weekly basis, over 100 persons coming here for food, there's just so much we can do. We need your help. How can you help? Well, you can partner with us and you can be a donor. You can volunteer your service. I'm sure you've heard about WHEEL. WHEEL, which stands for Welfare, Health, Education, Empowerment, and Local Community, helps to fund the pantry. By donating to WHEEL, you are helping to feed someone. You are helping a family who has probably nothing at home to eat. Have you been in a situation where you open your cupboard and there is nothing, not even a little sugar to sweeten your tea? Well, persons have come here who have nothing. And some of these persons have families with children, children who are crying, mothers with their babies in their laps, crying because they're hungry. You can donate to WHEEL. You can make a difference. Make that difference today. And if your contribution is something a bit more tangible, something you won't have in your hand to give us, then you can come by our office at 58 Brunswick Avenue. Or you can call us on 876-984-2044. Or you can email us at Adventist Community Services at centraljaorg We are waiting to hear from you. What will you do today? What will you do today? What matters most to Jesus should matter most to us. And as I close off this morning, I would like to let you know that on the 28th of this month, May, we will be having our children convention. The children have been cooped up long enough. 
they are ready to celebrate the love of Jesus. This will be held at the Family of God Church and will be live streamed on the CJC Online Church right here. We also have this evening, our Youth in Vegetable Service continues. This afternoon, they will be at the May Penn Church and the guest speaker will be Pastor Dane Fletcher, the Youth Director from Jamaica Union Conference. Brothers and sisters, we are a part of a big church. We are a part of the church of God. Happy Sabbath. Do your part for Christ. Thank you, Sister Raquel. Learned a lot there in regards to what the Adventist Community Services Department is all about. Sacrifice, service, and meeting the needs of others. I am on CJC's Facebook page, and I see that we have some persons who've commented in the chat and I want to say hello and happy Sabbath to some of these persons. So, Trudy to bless. I saw that you were the first one to comment there. Happy Sabbath to you. Cicely McNeish, and Charmaine Brown, and Sharon Lewin. Happy Sabbath, ladies. And uh, happy to have you worshiping with us today. I am seeing that we have someone from Suriname worshiping with us, and we just want to say welcome and happy Sabbath to you. We are on watchcjclive.com. We are on CJC's Facebook page, and we are also live on CJC's YouTube channel, as well as Bless TV. And of course, there are churches across the Central Jamaica Conference who stream or programs live so welcome to all of you who are on with us and worshiping today we trust that you've been blessed so far and we know that additional blessings are in store for you we just want to remind you, well, we just want to encourage you rather to put your prayer requests in the chat. If you have any prayer requests at all, no matter what the request is, we encourage you to share them in the chat. We have our prayer team standing by to petition God on your behalf. And we are so privileged to be able to do that for you. We also want to let you know that we have a feedback survey that's ready for you to answer it's very short it doesn't take a lot of time but we would love to know more about you and what you're interested in as it relates to our programs so the tech team will be placing the link to that survey in the chat and we encourage you to fill that out and also to share it with others if you joined us a little later in the program, we are happy that you are here and we encourage you to share the link with someone if you haven't done that just yet. So whoever comes to mind, share the link with them. We are now transitioning to our Divine Hour segment and we are going to praise the Lord at this time. God inhabits our praise, so we are going to sing praises unto his name at this time with our praise team, New Creation. Amen. It's that time of the service again where we lift our hands and praise God for he is worthy to be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is the name of the Lord is as strong as strong tower. The righteous, the righteous run into it, and they. Just run. 
Of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Sing Jesus. Jesus is the name of the Lord. Most high. times in our life when things get so rough that we question God we fail to see his blessings in our life and upon our life from day to day once you have life that's a blessing once you have life you must praise once you have life sole duty is to bless the Lord wherever you are and suit your voice and sing
in the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, do the same in everything. Give the king of th kings all the thanks. I think that sometimes we, we, who, we overestimate our relationship with God. It's so easy for us to become ungrateful, but I'm here to tell you, in the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, do the very same. So you see, even when there's no money in your pocket and times are rough, just lift your hands to the heavens and say, thank you, Jesus. Because there's no other one that brought you to this, that successful place. And there's no other person who can get you out of where you are. So in the bad times, I sing, praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. He's my Jesus, blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Let everybody sing, praise Him. So what happens in life he's still Jesus blessed, blessed Savior. He's worthy let me show you how good God is think you understand how good God is even the angels around him they sing glory 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 Jesus blessed Savior his word A strong deliverer. A strong deliverer. In Him. In Him will I always trust. Sing holy. a happy Sabbath. I enjoyed praise and worship and I hope you did too. Jesus, blessed Savior, he is worthy of all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Hallelujah. I am going to our YouTube channel at this time. We are checking in to see what the viewers are saying in the meantime as that loads we have a few questions for you that we'd love for you to answer for us what does the theme what matters most to jesus mean to you 
What do you think matters most to Jesus? That's the next question. And the last question is, why do you think it is important to serve others? So let me do a recap of our questions. What does the theme, what matters most to Jesus, mean to you? What do you think matters most to Jesus? And why do you think it is important to serve others? If you want to answer all the questions, that's fine. If you want to answer one of the questions or more than one, that's fine. That is up to you. But we would love for you to answer any or all of the questions. All right. So I am not seeing my YouTube coming up here on my device. So I'm going to hop on to another device to see if we can bring up the YouTube page. But in the meantime, I'll just check in quickly on Facebook. I'm seeing that Amonique Martin, Terry Ann MacDonald joined us since the last time we checked in. Happy Sabbath to you, to both of you. And we hope that you've been having a wonderful time with us so far. We remind you to send in your prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, we invite you to share them with us in the chat. And we have the prayer team standing by to pray for you. We have the scripture reading, a team song, that's the Adventist Community Services team song, as well as our offertory and intercessory prayer coming up in a few moments from now. And right now we are going to go to our scripture reading. Our scripture reading is taken from St. Matthew 25, verses 31 to 40. Let's read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. Separate as a shepherd divided his sheep from his goats. He shall set his sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungered, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. Yes, 
goes door to door, washing, cooking, cleaning too, praying as we visit you. God is love, God is love, God is love, God is love. Come and join this caring band, come and lend a helping hand. ACS is not new, ACS is me and you, Adventist community. Surfaces is ACS, 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 ACS. Come and join this caring band. Come and lend a helping hand. ACS, 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 ACS. Come. Join this caring band. Come and lend a helping hand. Since we began our community services weekend, we've been looking at the question, what matters most to Jesus? But really, what does matter the most to Jesus? Last evening, Sister Marshall Baker gave us the answer to that same question. Service to our fellow men. Now automatically, I know your minds are drawn to what is being done by the Adventist Community Services, where they go out and they minister to the felt needs of our brothers and sisters. But how many of us are able to, or are brave enough, to actually go out? There is a way I'm happy to tell you that you can render service to your fellow men and at the same time, giving worship to God. Now, there's a little song that says, little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. This act of worship, well, before I say that, what exactly is this little that I'm speaking about? It's simple, your tithes, your offerings, and special gifts. This act of worship, and I keep saying it, this act of worship actually serves our fellow men. You have the Adventist Community Services, you have the CJC Food Pantry, and Wheel, which from your offerings and special gifts can reach and meet all of these felt needs. So don't you ever say, I don't have much to give. It's just a little I have. Mm -mm. Don't say that. Once you return a faithful tithe and give a free will, a free will offering and gift, the Lord can do amazing things. He is more than able to bless it and allow it to extend his ministry of care and compassion. Now, before you ask, how can I give? We'll show you that in a moment. But before we do, Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us many ways in which to worship you. And as we offer our praise in this method by returning a faithful tithe and giving a thankful offering and giving a special gift, we pray that you will accept our worship and it will be pleasing in your sight. Please be with those who have and those who do not have. We ask all these mercies in your, special, in your son's precious name. Amen. And now, here is how you can give.
Let us pray. Dear eternal, kind, loving Father, as we, your children, come to you on this blessed day, your Sabbath day of rest, we want to thank you, eternal God, for seeing it fit to bless us one more time with life. We come to devote ourselves to you in the act of worship because you are a great, kind, and loving God, a compassionate friend, and a caring father. Dear Lord, we put before you all the prayer requests that have been sent in the chat. We know that individuals out there are in dying need of your assistance. Dear Lord, for those who are sick, whether physical or mental, we ask, Father, that you grant them healing. For those who might be financially broke or going through other struggles, we ask that you intervene in their lives. Dear Father, we put before you the manservant himself and ask that you take a live call from your altar, O oh God, and anoint his tongue. May your message go forth with clarity and with power. May hearts be one, O oh eternal Father, and may your kingdom increase and that of the enemy decrease. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us peace. We thank you for giving us happiness. May we see your presence and feel your Holy Spirit even more than before today. These mercies we do ask in the wonderful Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are now at the point of our program where we will be introducing our speaker for divine service. Our speaker for today is Pastor Everett Smith. Now, Pastor Smith was born and raised in the parish of Manchester in the district of Grove Place. He's a graduate of West Indies College, now Northern Caribbean University, as well as the Andrews University. Pastor Smith began his pastoral work in 1984, and he has since pastored in all the parishes in Central Jamaica Conference, that is St. Catherine, Clarendon, and Manchester. He previously served as personal ministries and Sabbath school director, and currently serves as the director for the community services and the publishing ministries departments. Pastor Smith loves the Lord. He's also excited about the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And his desire is to share the good news of salvation, which he loves to do, actually, with everyone that he meets. He has conducted several evangelistic series locally and abroad, including places such as Miami, New York, London, the Cayman Islands, Canada, and Grenada. Pastor Smith is also a justice of the peace and loves to help people and officiate weddings. And let's not forget, he really, really is passionate about preaching the word of God. He is married to Margaret smith and she is a secretary by profession and they both have three sons oshar ramon and gavret we ask for his direction from the holy spirit at this time we ask for you to pray him up as he prepares to come and speak to us and before he comes, we will have Sister Nakaira Bansi doing the song of meditation. has not been broken who here among us 
is without guilt or pain so oft abandoned by your transgressions if such a thing as grace exists then grace was made for lives like this there are no strangers such a thing as grace exists then grace was made for lives like this there are no strangers Thank you very much, Sister Bandley Nikara, for that beautiful song. There are no strangers. We are one big family in God's sight with one aim and one hope and one destiny in mind, and that is to make it to the kingdom of God. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everyone. The songwriter says, God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He is so good to me. He picked me up, turned me around, 
plant my feet on higher ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He is so good to me. If God has been good to you, just lift your hands wherever you are and praise the Lord. If you know the Lord is keeping you, shout amen or write amen in the chat right now. If you know God picked you up, turn you around, and today your feet are planted on higher ground. If you know that, then type thank you Jesus in the chat. This morning, we're here to worship the Lord. We want to say thanks to our conference president, Pastor Neville Barrett, and I want to greet you on behalf of the administrators, our secretary, Pastor Howard Grant, our treasurer, Pastor Billy Watson. And we are very grateful and happy that you have made CJC Online your church, your choice of worship for today. Our God is an awesome God. He has blessed us today with your presence on this platform. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for the response in the chat. And I want to assure you that as we worship this morning, that the Spirit of God will be very near and very dear to you. My passage for meditation comes to you from the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew chapter 25, and I will look in the interest of time from verses 41, and I will stop at verse 46. It says, Then will he say, Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you curse into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angel. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not close me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger? or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Bow your head with me as we pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, today we are grateful that you have taken us on this platform where, Lord, we can lift you up we can worship you. We can praise you because indeed you are worthy to be praised. Your people today are listening. They are watching on the various platform. And oh God, they want to hear you speak to them. They want to hear a word from you. As your humble servant, I give myself of you to be used by you. Fill me up one more time with your Holy Spirit power. 
stand beside me, behind me, and before me. And, oh, God, help that your words will go forth today with power and with clarity. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that somehow, somebody, somewhere, will be closer drawn to you, I pray, will accept you as Lord and Savior, and be ready for your second advent, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. The story is told of a pastor who remembers a time during his teenage years when his older brother returned home filled with delight, filled with enthusiasm and excitement from a camp meeting. You see, this older brother was coming from a division-wide Pathfinder's campery and brought with him something that looked like a gold medal. It was his reward for winning a marathon at the Campari. This medal was the joy, this bliss, his ecstasy, his elation. It matters much to him. For him, it was a great achievement. However, his dad surprised him. He did not feel excited about the medal. He asked if the medal could buy food or if it could be used in any way in the house. Dad thought that this medal was only to occupy space. It had no good reason. Receiving a medal did not so much matter to the dad like it did to the pastor's brother. What matters most to you? What would you consider as your greatest achievement in life? Your greatest accomplishment? Your greatest success? or attainment, if there's some accolade uh, at the top of the list of your resume, something that you might even want to remember for after you have passed on. How about your Christian life? What are the things that make you proud? Things you feel you have done well in Things that make you feel, ladies and gentlemen, that you are acceptable to Jesus because I have done this. What are the things that you have done to make you proud? Maybe, just maybe, you have read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation over and over again. Maybe, as a youth in the church, you may have overcome temptation like Joseph in Egypt. Maybe you have conducted outreach program as community services leaders and workers, sewing classes, cooking classes. You have fed the hungry. You have been to the prison. You have seen people baptized. What matters to you? Maybe you are a vegetarian. Never ate meat from you were born. Or maybe you did. But since you have been converted, you are even now a vegan. And consider those who eat meat not fit for translation. What are you proud of? These things may make you feel that you're on the right track. 
the right track in your Christian walk with Jesus. And these are what matter most to us, but do they matter to Jesus? And every time I preach a sermon, I have to evaluate myself. And in preparing for this message from the Lord, I look at myself. I took time out to evaluate my own self. I have been a minister in the Adventist church going over 39 years. I have been a pastor and I realized that I have preached many sermons. If you could listen to me this morning. I said I have preached many sermons. I have conducted many evangelistic series all over. I have, up to date, conducted 700 and plus marriages. I felt, yes, I have done my best for Jesus. But as I read Matthew 25, 31 to 46, I realized something that I had not realized before. Jesus, when he returned, somebody ought to listen to me. Jesus, when he returned, he will not ask me how many sermons I have preached. He will not ask me how many weddings I have conducted. He will not ask me how many persons I have baptized. They might have been important to me, but what may seem like my great achievement, even on my spiritual journey, may so far from being what matters most to Jesus. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Hear me today. It is very, very important for us to know what matters most to Jesus? Not only must we know, but we must do it. We must do what, happen, uh, what matters most to Jesus. Because you see, someday each of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to give an account of how we have spent the gift of life that he has given to us. And you know... The greatest tragedy of life is to reach the end zone of your life. It's for me to reach the end zone of my life and recognize, realize that in spite of my sacrifices, Lord have mercy, the sacrifices that I made for the church, the many things that I have accomplished, I would have missed the mark and would have failed to do what God wanted me to do. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be a tragedy. In the Bible, we read about great men like Saul who seems to have accomplished a lot Yet not the things that God wanted him to accomplish. Judas may have accomplished a great deal in his life, but in the end, he missed God's will and purpose for his life and ended up losing out on salvation. However, we look at Solomon. At the end of his life, he realized that living for God and God's people was far better than just enjoying the throne as a king. Solomon decided in his last moment of his life to focus on what he believed matters most to God. He put aside his kingly crown and robe, put them aside, and became a great preacher, 
As a matter of fact, he cried out, vanity is a vanity. All that I have been doing is vanity and vexation of spirit. Therefore, it is very important that we are careful to focus on the things that matters most to Jesus. Matthew 5, Matthew 25, 31, 46. In our passage that we had for our scripture reading, Jesus revealed to us what matters most to him. He revealed to us what he expects us, his followers, to do, uh, to be doing as we wait for his return. Matthew 25, 31, 46 is a part of the sermon of Jesus to his disciples on Mount Olivet. The disciples had learned from Jesus that the temple of Jerusalem would someday be destroyed. They thought if such a great temple would be destroyed, then it had to do with the end of the world and the establishment of Christ's kingdom. The disciples were so interested in knowing when all these things would take place, they wanted to be ready for that time. Oh God, I wish this morning, I wish today that all of us here in the heat of my voice, all of us listening today would want to get ready for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The whole of Matthew 24 and 25 is Christ's answer to the question of the disciples. They say, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the end? The sign of your coming and the end of the age. So in Matthew 24, Christ focuses on the sign of the time. The key message there is called, that is called, is a call for us to watch and to pray. Since we do not know exactly when Jesus will come. One thing we must not lose sight of, uh, of is that he will come. He will come. I want to tell somebody that he went away not to stay. He'll be coming back again. He's going to come in the fullness of his glory. And hallelujah, what we need to do is to be ready for his second coming. There is nothing so important for a Christian than be ready for the second coming of Jesus. This is the hope of the ages. This is the event toward which all creation move. Hallelujah, if I have time for you this morning, I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that our dead men and our dead women will live again. Hello, if I had time, I will tell you that when he returns, there'll be no more suffering. No more heartaches, no more pain, no more need for a community service department. Hallelujah, when he returns, suffering and hardship will be no more. I say even so, come Lord Jesus. You need to be aware of the second coming of Jesus. It is not the only thing that will be sudden. Our death may be sudden. Therefore, it is very important that we always remain ready to meet Jesus. In Matthew 25, Jesus gives a warning message about the consequences of not being ready, not being prepared for his second coming. In the last portion of that chapter, Christ takes the mind of his disciples to the very time of his second coming. He warned them to be aware so that they would prepare for it. It's the message for all of us today. Jesus, hallelujah, is coming back as King of kings and Lord of lords and Lion of the tribe of Judah. No scientist can stop him. Hallelujah, you didn't hear me down there. No scientific prediction can stop him. Nothing, ladies and gentlemen, that man can do will be able to stop him. Ladies and gentlemen, he's coming, coming soon, I know. 
coming back to this earth again. And the pilgrim, hello, who sleep in the mighty deep will come to this earth again. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout amen. In Matthew 25, 31, Jesus refers to himself as the son of man. However, in verse 34, he referred to himself as the king. Jesus. I wish I had time to preach this morning. I wish I could preach this morning. I wish I had time, but I don't have time. Jesus, who once came to this earth as a little baby, so poor that he was born in a manger. You know, him down there, slept on hay. That was his bed. Smuggled into Africa, rare up in Nazareth. Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, the baby that was born in a manger will return someday as King of Kings and Lord of Lords to rule and to reign forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. Jesus, who once came and was not recognized, ladies and gentlemen, even by his own relatives, he was rejected by them. They wanted to kill him, his own people. He will come back in power and authority and supremacy and glory to Though during his first coming, it seems like nothing much has, has happened. When he comes the second time, all, hallelujah, all the world will know. Every eye shall see him as he returns in majesty and glory with a host of angels. He'll be coming not as a savior of the world, but as a judge. You know, hear me down there. He will not be coming as your lawyer, but he'll be coming as your judge. He'll be coming no more to be tortured, no more to be scorned, no more to be spit upon, no more to be nailed to a cross. But ladies and gentlemen, he'll be coming back to put an end to sin and sinners. And I say, praise the Lord. This must have excited the disciples, knowing that they would be a part of the great kingdom where the Lord will reign forever and ever and ever. And I say, amen. I say, even so, come Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. Come and put an end to what is happening on planet Earth. In our passage, we are told that Jesus will separate people in two groups. He used two analogies to represent these two groups. One of them, ladies and gentlemen, will be the goats. You're not hearing me. You're not listening to me. You want to sleep. I said, one of them will be goats on the right. And the other will be the sheep. The sheep will be those who have surrendered their life to Jesus and follow him all the way. The goats are all those who live for themselves and wanted Jesus to follow them. Then Jesus will pronounce judgment upon both group, groups, the God to eternal punishment, and the sheep to eternal life. These are two shocking things that we need to consider. First, the God and the sheep are surprised to be on the side on which they find themselves. The people on the right side are amazed by the fact that they are chosen to be there. And it is said, Kimali, 
that heaven will be a place full of surprises. You didn't hear me. You're not listening to me. You were on the chat. You're not listening to me. You're not hearing me. Heaven will be a place that will be full of surprises. The first surprises, the first surprise will be that you are there. That I am there. That's the first surprise. In other words, the righteous won't feel that they deserve to be saved. They won't feel that they have done anything that qualifies them, qualifies them to be received the gift of eternal life. It is because of that the saved will be grateful to God's amazing grace. In the same way, those on the left side will also wonder why they are there. They feel that they have done good things to, return, to, to earn eternal life. They have a list of things they have done in the name of Jesus. Lord, in thy name we have cast out devils. In thy name we have healed the sick. In thy name we have performed many miracles. In thy name we have done many great things. Jesus is going to say, Depart from me. I know you are not. A faithful judge will give the reason for his judgment and his shocking revelation. Jesus now turned to those on the right side to let them know why they are chosen for eternal life. He says, listen, listen, wake up now. He says, I was hungry. Mm. And you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. In verse 36, he says, I was naked, hallelujah, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me, hallelujah. I was in prison, and you came to me. What is, sh what, what is shocking? In Christ's word to the righteous. He does, he, that he does not give a list of the thing that they did that seems to matter much to us as human beings. Jesus don't even talk about spiritual dis discipline. He doesn't say you are chosen because, how do I tell you this? You are chosen. No, I can't tell you that. <laughs> Hello? You are chosen because, listen, you return a faithful tithe and offering. You are chosen because you keep the Sabbath. You are chosen because you are Sunday night meeting and Wednesday night meeting and prayer meeting. Did you see it in the text? No! He did not say that. Lord, help me. He did not say that. He didn't say you're chosen because you pray a lot. You read your Bible regularly. He does not mention things like that, although they are crucial. Instead, Jesus talked about things that we may have taken for granted, things we may even neglect. He, we see that the righteous are not even aware of these things. But Christ remember the seamless, small, and important things. It is because these are the things that matters most to him. Hello, what matters to Jesus? And you're going to stone me this morning. He's giving somebody a glass of water. It's not your big prayers that matters most to Jesus. Giving somebody a glass of water. Giving some food to your neighbor. I don't like how you look at me. Giving some food to the man on the street who have not eaten for days. That's what mattered to Jesus. Can I tell you more? Visiting someone who is sick. Hello? Going to the prison. To visit the prisoners behind bar. That's what matters to Jesus. 
saying a word of encouragement to someone who is discouraged. Doing something to relieve suffering. I can't tell you this one. Sending a money, some money to a student at NCU. I go to NCU for approximately nine years in between high school and college. There were days when I was hungry. And had it not been for a man named Mr. Lindsay, I would have passed out. I'm telling you, may God bless him. All these can be summed up in one word, compassion. Jesus says, you are my sheep indeed, because you did the thing which matters most to me. We need to take note that Jesus is not teaching salvation by works here. He's not saying that do these things secure one's place in heaven. Jesus began his words to the righteous by saying, come you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In other words, the righteous, those on the right side, the sheep, are there because they are blessed. Can somebody hear me today? All of you who are here, listen to my voice on, online, wherever you are. Touch yourself on your shoulder and tell yourself, I am blessed. Bless! And the Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. These people have had an encounter with Jesus. They have experienced the mercy of Jesus. They are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And because of the experience of salvation, they became instrument and ambassadors for Jesus. They became Christ's hands and feet and voice and arm. Christ lives in their life so that they could care for others. They are filled with the compassion of Jesus. They had died to selfishness and pride to this world. The righteous, the sheep, those on the right side of Jesus did not just talk about Jesus. You, you have many people in the church today who talked about Jesus. Hello? They have a lot of argument about Jesus. But check them out. All of them have is talk. I don't like how you look at me. They, they have never reached out to help anybody. They're always looking help for themselves. You know, hear me down there. But they have never spent time to assist anybody. The righteous became a manifestation of Christ's love and compassion to the world. They lived Christ-centered lives. And they bore the fruit of salvation. They know that the righteous are so humble that they do not even know that they are doing all these things. It is because they are doing so, it is because they are doing so not to be saved, but because they are already saved. Hello? Hello? When you are saved by Jesus and you know you are saved, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to worry about do's and don't and don't do this and I don't like how you look at me and don't do that there are certain things that are natural hello when you are wrapped up and tied up that's the old nigger spiritual from Grove Place used to say that they're wrapped up and oh if I could preach here this morning that they are wrapped up and tied up in Jesus when you are wrapped up and tied up and covered under the blood man there are certain things that you do naturally you 
can't go to your bed and sleep and know that your next door neighbor is hungry. You can't go to your bed and sleep and know that there are students at NCU, ladies and gentlemen, who don't have shoes to wear and you are comfortable when you're wrapped up and tied up in Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll reach out to suffering humanity. People represented by the gold live selfish lives. They care about nothing but themselves. Me, myself, and I. That's where they are. They live the way that's this, this way because they are not blessed. They have never had an encounter with Jesus. They have never surrendered their life to Jesus. They have no power to live for. They have nothing to live for because they are never desire to have a relationship with Jesus. They may do many good things, but they do them hallelujah, for self-glorification, for self-motive. They give you some food, but they do it because they want to tell their friends. You know, hear me down there. Some of them give you some things, and they do it because they want to own you. I don't like how you look at me. I don't like how you look at me. You want me to be afraid of you, man. But I'm not afraid of you, man. I'm not afraid of anybody. They do things because they want favor. Favors in return. They give to get. Everything they do is an investment for some big return in the future. That's why Jesus tells them that he never knows them. But I want to let them know today that there's still an opportunity. Where do you say? Mercy gates are still open wide. If I could talk to you this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not too late. In the ancient time, both sheep and goats were grazed together. When they mixed, it was hard to distinguish one from the other. However, at the end of the day, the shepherd, can you hear me this morning? The shepherd would separate his sheep from the goat. His sheep knew his voice. The shepherd also knew them. So they could easily follow Jesus. Today, we all live together. In the church, we go to church together. Hello? You didn't hear me. May I tell you, without any contradiction, that in the church we have goats? No, I didn't, yes. And we have sheep and we have goats in the church. Hello? That's why you should not allow goats to drive you out. Hello. Don't allow goats for you to question whether or not this is a true church or you must look for another. Ladies and gentlemen, the wheat and the tears must grow together until the day of harvest. But a harvest day is coming when God will separate the wheat from the tears and the goat from the sheep. Hallelujah! You stay in the church. It is God's church. I want to let you know on that day he's going to say, Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I want to let you know that the final judgment day will come. When Christ will separate his sheep from the gold. In the book of Revelation, we learn that we are right now living in the hour of judgment. Christ is determined, determining who, will, who, who his sheep are and who the goats are. Time is running out very quickly. 
But the best news is that you can choose which side you want to be on today. He says, today, if you hear my voice, hard or not, you're hard. I want to let you know that Christ longs for each of us to be on his right side, to be on his side, his sheep. That's why he gave us this message to Matthew. So that on that day, we won't be caught by surprise. We won't be caught by a surprise. What a loving God we serve. So in our passage, Christ talked about the root of salvation, which is allowing him to save us by surrendering our lives completely to him. And then he will talk about the fruit of salvation, meaning the life we live because of the salvation we experience by faith in Jesus Christ. And then through, the, through his love and care, ladies and gentlemen, we will show compassion to the suffering world. We'll become God's instrument in relieving the needs of the people around us. I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, through the grace of God, if we are faithful, We'll hear the words, come ye, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food, hallelujah. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I want to let you know today that by the grace of God, I want to be there. I want to see you there. I want to be among the sheep. I want to be on the Lord's side. If you all want to be on the Lord's side, Today you're watching online. Type in the chat. Let the devil know. I want to be on the Lord's side. I want to be a sheep and not to be a goat. I want, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus to plead my case in the heavenly sanctuary. I want to help somebody. Somewhere that says, if I could help somebody as I pass along. If I could cheer somebody with a word or song. If I could tell somebody that he's going wrong. Then my living. Hallelujah this morning. My living. You didn't hear me down there. I say my living would not be in vain. If you want to live for Jesus. Just stand with me wherever you are. Stand with me wherever you are. Raise your hand to heaven wherever you are. And bow your head with me as we pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the reminder today that you have called us all to live for you. You have called us to be our brother's keeper. You have called us to reach out to suffering humanity. You have called us, Lord, and you have ordained us for service. We recognize that we might have failed you in the past, but where we have failed you, we seek your forgiveness. We seek your mercies. We pray, God, today that you'll create in us a new heart. Give us a new attitude so that we can reach a higher altitude we pray today that you'll continue to provide for the less fortunate. Make a way for them. And oh God, help us to do our part. And we pray that when that day come, when you shall have separated the sheep from the goat, that you help us all to have a home in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen and amen. Have a happy Sabbath, everybody. And the Lord bless you. I see you tomorrow evening.
at 7, when we will have another powerful message from the Lord. Enjoy the afternoon. Remember that we have the youth program, the consecration program, and the dedication program for our young people starting at 3. It will go up to sunset. We want you to be a part of it. Keep faith in the Lord, and I'll see you tomorrow evening. Same time, same place. The Lord bless you, and enjoy your meal. Thank you. Amen and amen. Selfless ministry to those who are lonely, hungry, naked, sick, in prison, homeless, are the things that matters most to Jesus. We are thankful for this wonderful reminder from the Bible as it relates to the ministry of care and compassion and how important this is to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to God Almighty, as well as the Holy Spirit. We pray and we trust and we hope that the word of God has taken root in your heart today and that you have reconnected with God and are purposing in your heart to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to extend care and compassion to others. Before we go, we just want to remind you that we'll be back this afternoon at 2.30 and we will be having at that time our investiture services for our master guides, senior youth, pathfinders, and adventurers. The service will be held at the May Penn Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the speaker will be Pastor Dane Fletcher, and he is the Youth Director of the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. You can join us as well tomorrow at 7 for another program in this series being spearheaded by the Adventist Community Services Department. And on Monday at 7, Your Health and You, the St. Catherine team will be leading out in that program. And the starting time is 7 p.m. And the topic will be a mouth full of secrets. We also will be having our prayer house experience. That's our prayer experience, or house of prayer experience, rather, on Wednesday. And we'll be back on Sabbath. And we'll be coming to you live from the Brayton Seventh-day Adventist Church. We pray that you will continue to stay connected with us and follow us on our social media channels to see what's happening, what updates are coming up, what programs you will be having. And we just want to wish you God's richest blessings and that you will enjoy your lunch and we also hope that you will keep safe. God bless you. See you this afternoon, 2.30.
proclaiming his child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, his child and forever I am. Redeemed. Child and forever I am His child and His child and forever